Alright guys, my name is Metagoblin and today we're going to be doing a discussion video on which classes are actually fun for raiding in Classic WoW. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically make a tier list of A, B and C. You know, obviously A being the most fun, C being the least fun, okay? I don't think I need to go from like S all the way to E, like League of Legends or something like that. And uh, let me basically cover what, what, what do I define as a fun class for raiding in in PVE because it does it is entirely subjective to each individual's opinion. But just before we jump in guys, please do me a quick follow on Twitch if you want to catch any of my live streams. So I'm gonna give you my criteria and my idea of a fun class. And you may not have agreed you just may not agree with it, and it's as simple as that. You may be thinking Meta Goblin, you're chatting a load of nonsense. What I find fun in a, a class is totally different to what you find fun in a class, and that's fair enough. Which means you don't need to stalk me on Facebook and give me death threats, which keeps on happening for some reason, but anyway. What I find fun in a class is a varied playstyle. So, when I choose a class, I'm looking for a class where the playstyle is actually interesting, you cast more than one ability, and it's flavorable, it's just a little bit interesting, and it basically challenges you to, um, well, master, and it takes a while to master, because there's a number of different things. Like, I'm still trying to perfect the ro optimal rogue rotation and raiding, I'm still trying to perfect the perfect combos and everything like that. And I think there's a lot of classes out there that they're just very dull in PvE because they don't have a varied playstyle, the, the playstyle is very limited. Um, a lot of people in my guild joke about this, how um, like one of, one of the mages in my guild, he's got Frostbolt on two, on two keybinds, just so that if he gets bored of pressing one keybind, he can press the other. You know, chestnut checkers. But then again, the mage may be a bit dull in PvE, but it's extremely fun in PvP. So, we are exclusively talking about raiding. If you want to play this game entirely just for raiding, then this is the video for you to pay attention to, if you're picking a class or picking an alt to play. So let's talk about the A tier. I'm going to talk about each class to my best of my ability, but obviously I haven't played each and every one of them in absolute depth. I've messed about with them a little bit on Retro WoW, which is an instant 60 server, so I know a little bit. But there are some classes obviously on this list which I do have a lot of experience with and I can give more... Uh, well, I can talk a lot more about them, and they're primarily Rogue, Shaman, and Hunter. But anyway, so let's talk about A, the A tier list. I would, uh, I put Rogue, Warrior, Hunter, and Shaman in the A tier. Okay, the reason why I put Rogue in there is because, uh, for one, you're going to be using more than one ability. Uh, you will probably be using a total of three most of the time. But even, like, um, you will be using Rupture from time to time. It does become useful in some situations, like 20-man raiding. So there's a lot of different playstyles that you can play. If you get bored of playing uh, Swords, you can go and experiment with playing Daggers. And Specs, what you spec into PvP, can also be quite useful in PvP. So there's less headache around that issue. So yeah, there's just, like, a lot to do. Um, well, just a little bit more to do than other classes. The playstyle all about is all about the combo points and perfecting the usage of combo points and optimizing the RNG of consuming combo points to regenerate energy. I think it's a really interesting playstyle. You know, you have to track your weapon swing time. You have to track your energy bar. There's a lot of things to track, and I just yeah, I just generally think the rogue is an interesting playstyle that will take you quite a while to master. You know, look at other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about that because I've got quite a few of them. Next, we have the warrior. So warrior, uh, I. I basically put down DPS Warrior and Tank Warrior. Primarily, I would say Tank Warrior. I think Tank Warrior is probably one of the most fun specs that you can actually play in the game. It's very challenging, very intellectually demanding. It requires a lot of strategy, perfect timing, and a lot of big, um, well, big balls, to be honest. The thing that's really great about playing a tank is that there isn't a perfect kind of routine rotation that you have to follow in order to optimize your gameplay. You know, for instance, when you play in DPS, you normally have, like, basically a pattern of spells that you press in order to optimize your DPS. When you're playing a tank, it's entirely situational. There is a rough, like, pattern that you should follow to optimize your survivability, but now and again you have to adapt to certain mechanics, certain situations, which means the playstyle is basically very different and it can vary from boss to boss. Again, it's going to keep, keep you engaged and keep you interested in the class. Uh, for when it comes to DPS Warrior, again, the rotation is a really is really interesting, I, I personally think. There's um, a number of abilities that you will use in your patterned rotation, and there's even a number of ways, and more advanced ways, that you can increase the DPS of your 
uh, rotation by stance dancing, which I think is a really fun and interesting playstyle, and the game takes a while to master, so it will keep you interested for a long period of time. Next we have the Hunter. I've played Hunter quite a lot during uh, through raiding. The reason why I like Hunter so much is the um, in order to optimise the rotation, it requires a lot of perfect timing. Um, bearing in mind that your weapon, basically your weapon swing timer on your bow, you have to pay really close attention to that and when it goes off so you don't clip your own uh, auto shots. And then it's all about snugly fitting in certain abilities in between your weapon shots, which um, I just find generally quite fun. There's a load of other things, you know, you, where, when the pet comes into play in raiding and buffing the buffing melee groups and yeah there's there's, there's a few uh, things that you can do as a hunter and you'll also be doing some kiting from time to time you'll be doing pulling which uh, can be quite fun as well so yeah you've you know you've got a few things to do as a hunter so I, I generally do find the hunter quite interesting the last one we have is shaman the reason why I put shaman down is um basically shamans are like most other healers they they heal and they dispel and you know that's about it more or less there are obviously a few other things that other healers do, but the reason why I like the Shaman so much is because of the added Totem playstyle. Totems are a very fascinating and interesting kind of bard style playstyle, which I personally find really fun and interesting to play. Because you basically, depending on... Well, the playstyle was always different because to different Totems benefit different classes. And depending on what group you're going to get slotted in when it comes to raiding and depending on what raid you're going into, you're going to be using different Totems. So the playstyle and the understanding and the techniques of totem placing always is constantly changing and you you know it takes a while for you to fully learn the totem system learn learn how each totem benefits each class in particular ways in fact you basically have to have a little bit of basic knowledge of every single other class in order to play shaman most effectively because you you know you need to kind of broaden and augment the strengths of other classes with your totems. So I find that personally quite an interesting playstyle which keeps me engaged rather than just spamming healing all the time, I'm also messing about with totems and buffing people and being conscious of that playstyle as well, so it's like two playstyles in one. So this is why I do play Resto Shaman on a Raffa Lich King server as well and I find it really fun. But anyway, let's move on to the B tier. So in the B tier I have Paladin and Priest. So the reason why I'm putting Paladin here is for the similar reasons that I put Shaman here. You do still have that kind of bad style playstyle with um but in in this case it's it's basically your buffs instead of totems. So you have a number of buffs as a paladin. It's um it requires a little bit of understanding to learn over buffs and how they benefit different classes. So again, pretty much for similar reasons as a shaman. You also have really cool pally power abilities, which I've always found really useful. So some great utility, some great wipe uh, uh, saving mechanics. You know stuff like bubble, stuff like bop. It's you know there's just a lot of extremely powerful uh, utility options for the paladin, which I do find interesting. Next, we obviously have the Priest. Priest, for most part, you are just going to be, you know, spamming healing and the occasional dispel. But the reason why I put Priest in the B tier is because there are some, a few other things um, when it comes to raiding for a Priest, for a number of utility options. For instance, Mind Control, um, using Mind Control in a certain number of boss mechanics becomes quite useful. So, for that reason, basically for the reason of Mind Control, uh, I think Priests are a little bit more interesting than some of the classes in the C tier basically. But anyway, let's talk about the wood division, the C tier. For this, I've put Mage, Warlock, and Druid. So we've already talked about Mage and why I would put this as one of the fairly more boring classes to play in raiding, in my humble subjective opinion, which you do not have to listen to. And the main reason for that is because you basically, your life is fairly simple and fairly straightforward. All you have to do is cast Frostbolt and that's it. So you, you will probably spend about three hours of a raid night just spamming Frostbolt. And in my opinion, I don't find that to be particularly fun. Now and again, you will have to do other things like AoE on certain bosses, which makes it a little bit more interesting. But for the most part, you are just going to be casting Frostbolt. And I personally just kind of find that a little dull. But again, like, mages are a really fun class in PvP, so they kind of make up for that. But like, we're just, you know, entirely talking about raiding in this video. Next we have the Warlock, same reason basically. Warlocks are just going to be casting Shadow Bolt for basically the whole expansion. Um, now and again they will use a Corruption if there's a debuff slot for it, but uh, only three Warlocks will have access to be basically doing that. And uh, you know, yeah, you're using that every like two seconds, uh, 20 seconds, so yeah, you're using like two abilities at most really as a Warlock. 
Uh, and uh, I, I think another thing I really do not like about playing Warlock is the fact that you have to have your pet sacrificed all the time unless you're going for a, um, is it DS Ruin spec? No, it's the uh, SM Ruin spec. So, again, like I, I, I like pets and I like having the pets out. I like pet control. If I was going to play a Warlock, I would go for the SM Ruin spec just to for it to be a little bit more interesting and, you know, having my pet out. But, again, I just think it's um, just a little bit boring because you're basically spamming Shadow Bolt for and then basically two expansions. And uh, the reason why I put Druid on in this in this list as well, in this part as well, basically because you ha you're basically doing the exact same thing as Priest and Paladin. You are just kind of spamming heals, but you have just less utility options to keep the spec interesting. You may think, well, Druid have always been a really fun class because they can switch out of different forms and adapt to different playstyles, but the thing is, in raiding, you're not going to be switching around in forms. You're going to be out of form the whole time, just casting healing abilities and the occasional innovate on someone when they need it. And personally, I just find it not to be as interesting as the other healing classes that have a little bit more util utility options. But again, this is all just subjective to my opinion. You don't have to listen to it. But that's pretty much um, where I'm going to end the video, to be honest, because I've pretty much covered everything that I thought I was going to do in this video. So anyway, my name is Metagoblin, to my next video, ciao.